lift off of the Falcon 9. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. They're initiating the capture of the dragon. Standing by. Capture is confirmed. I want to solve some of the world's toughest challenges today. So what was remarkable about that was they weren't NASA experts cheering, they were civilians. Because when the Dragon went up to the International Space Station in May, it was a private business. It was an entrepreneur with a vision who sent it up. Elon Musk was a bit of a prodigy. He sold his first computer game at 12 for $500. When he was 17, he left South Africa to go to the US. He dropped out of college quickly, and he gave himself three challenges to solve. First, he wanted to create multi-planetary life. He decided that you had to land on and then settle Mars. Second, he decided in this unsustainable world, we've got to find a way to beat the internal combustion engine. We've got to set up a company making the coolest but most sustainable electric cars. And then he thought, we've got solar power, we're not using it. So how can the disruptive entrepreneur create these opportunities. So he sold a little business that he helped start, PayPal, made a quarter of a billion dollars out of that, and he invested it. First, in SpaceX, aiming at taking him to Mars. There's Tesla Motors, just produced its sedan model car, aiming at the mainstream market. And the third business he's running, he's chairing, is Solar City, America's biggest provider of solar panels. He has a healthy disregard for the impossible. And I think it's something we can all learn from, whether we're in business, whether we're in education, whether we're creative. Larry Page, the co-founder of Google, when he was at the University of Michigan, he went on a summer leadership course. It was run by this organization, Leadership, and their mission statement, Caring and Thriving World, where we lead with integrity and a healthy disregard for the impossible. And that's what's motivated Larry Page in some of the extraordinary things he's done through Google. It's constant in Google Ventures, the things they invest in. It's looking for that healthy disregard for the impossible. Whether it's this new product they've launched, the Google Glass, which allows you both to transmit video from where you are and to see on the lens what's happening elsewhere. Whether it's a car that can drive itself. Self-driving car, here's a blind man driving it. Auto driving. Here we go. Where we go? <laughs> Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> no hands anywhere. No hands, no feet. No hands, no feet. No nothing. <laughs> I love it. So we're here at the stop sign. Yep. The car's using the radars and laser to, to check and make sure there's nothing coming either way. I find myself looking. <laughs> Old habits die hard, man. They, they, they don't die. Since no one else is crazy to do it, you have little competition. And the best people want to work on the big challenges. Plus, failed ambitious projects often lead to other dividends. So AdSense, which is a pretty healthy business for Google, that resulted from a failed project to understand the web better. So if you go into Google's office in Mountain View, they've got these posters on the wall. You know, what will be possible when the web is 100 times faster? What if your browser had five senses? These are all impossible visions. And then if you go into Facebook, it's this West Coast culture. So there are posters in the offices of Facebook. What would you do if you weren't afraid? Move fast and break things. Done is better than perfect. And even thinking to the heart of what the company is. Is this a technology company? To which someone scribbled, no, it's a poster-making company. But the idea of having this healthy disregard for the impossible is nothing new. Thomas Edison, who among other things we have to thank for the 
phonograph for popularizing the electric light way back in 1888. This was his to-do list. So among other things, he wanted to achieve the electric piano, ink for the blind, artificial ivory, James Dyson. When he created his bagless vacuum cleaner, he failed the first 5,126 iterations before he got it right. So I'm lucky to meet a lot of these bold, disruptive entrepreneurs, and they often go for the big one without worrying about things going wrong on the way, without that fear of failure. But I think the mindset can be translated. People at MIT, so this is Ed Boyden, whose mission is simply to solve the brain, inventing tools to help us understand the brain better. By the way, we also do have the flying car. So this product by Terrafuge is about to hit market. The wings fold up for when you want to drive it on the highways, but you can fly it when you want to. Personal jetpacks. There's this one from New Zealand. It's called the Martin Jetpack. Looking good, ready to go. This one goes up to 5,000 feet, just because it's an impossible vision that's being executed. What other impossible visions are there? There's a limitation on the minerals on this planet. What if we were to mine asteroids for minerals? There's a company doing that. With technological advances that are coming out of exponential technologies and investors willing to bear the risk, small teams are now able to do what only governments and large corporations could do before. Our vision is to catalyze humanity's growth both on and off the Earth. We're breaking new ground. Now is the time for us to gain access to these resources. And at the end, the entire human race will be the beneficiary as we expand our reach beyond the Earth into the solar system. So Peter Diamandis of Planetary Resources, he's also involved in this project in California, Singularity University, Again, trying to bring the best brains together to solve those problems that we have now. So I meet a lot of these people who are disruptors, and I'm trying to piece together what it takes to make that mindset. And I'm just going to whiz through some of the things I'm noticing. I'm at an early stage of this project, but they're people who ignore the smaller problems and go for the big ones. They have some need to make their mark on the world. They're obsessed. It's often not money that motivates them, even though many of them end up making quite a lot of it. Often they're an outsider to a system, or they're an immigrant. They usually have a mentor at an early stage. They can adapt if something goes wrong. They have a network that they nurture, and often maybe be a little bit difficult. So I'm just going to leave you with some of the sci-fi visions that we still haven't solved. So if you watch Star Trek, you might remember Mr. Spock and the tricorder, that little device. It's the device that's a wireless medical sensor that can tell you anything that's wrong with you. So we're getting there. There's the XPRIZE Foundation that, with Qualcomm, has just launched a $10 million prize to create one of these wireless devices. And these competitions with the prize at the end have a great history of working. So Spaceship One, which is helping Virgin Galactic go into, the, into space, that resulted from one of these. Back in 1919, the Ortega Prize, $25,000, that could go to the first aircraft that went from Paris to New York. Um, that was won by Charles Lindbergh in 1927, and it created the modern-day commercial space industry. So I would argue that all of us here, with the right mindset, can build anything. You just need a healthy disregard for the impossible. Thank you.